this from Aerotear here. And looks like I'm doing a spooky video, but really, like, I have my computer set to, like, one screen because I'm using my drawing pad. <laughs> Usually I use the lights from both screens. And then it's night out. Like, what time is it? It's 3.49. <laughs> Oh, I went into a shadow. Ooh, cool. Um, I'm using my phone for a light right now, and it's kind of blinding me. Um, but that's okay, because I have a book to look at anyway. <laughs> um, so this is kind of like a continuation on, like, reading for OCs. And I had some interesting results. Like, I, I don't really read for other people. Um, so, like... I mostly just read for myself. Usually with, uh, with other people, it's family members, and I could pretty much pinpoint it. Sometimes I don't necessarily, like, know what's going on, but the cards do, you know. The cards, they know, you know. <laughs> um, like, I've had, I did a reading once where I kind of was, like, uh, doing one, and Andy's like, you don't even have to say anything, because I already get it from the cards, and it's like, yeah. So, um, we did have some interest. <laughs> Like, there was some crazy stuff that was happening <laughs> in our last session, which I'm filming, like, um, Sunday night. Um, like, I, I already said the time. Um, and we had our session Friday at 7. And so, like, just to recap, the cards that I had drawn for the position of what are you going to find, it was Strength and then Demeter Harvest because I used um, my Dragon Age Inquisition Tarot and then I used the um, Mythic Oracle. I have no idea what I did. Um, advice, um, the Knight of Swords, and, um, per um, Persephone, which is Awakening. And then what are you gonna find? So, like, another thing we'll find during that time. Um, I was expecting us to actually stay in that area longer than what we did. Um, so, I feel like some of these cards ended up being just, because I, I thought that the whole session might have just pertained to us doing the whole thing. Um, and it would have been mostly us just dealing with actually that and the consequences of what we did there. But we decided to continue a bit because none of us wanted to, like, we, we wanted to keep going a bit, you know? So we continued a bit and, um, yeah. <laughs> um, so for what are you going to find? The second one was the Three of Coins... Apollo, which is clarity, advice, um, for that was the magician, and Artemis for purity, and what's going to happen is the page of cups, and Cronus, which is cycles, and, um, so for the first, what are you going to find, it's strength and Demeter, which is harvest, and I thought, um, it was like building myself up and taking them down with my group, it's going to be a harvest, ha 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 ha, um, Interesting, when we went down there, we, we only took down, like, one guy, which the Knight of Swords, which was in the advice, really makes sense, because literally, like, um, crap, I know his name, I, I just can't think of it, um, Haruz, was, was that it, or Half Orc, I, like, it's just such an inter- like, the, Flint is very much easier to remember his name, because it's Flint. <laughs> But it's, um, Karu's son of, um, T Taruga, um, also known as oh, something of the Northwood. I can't remember. Like, literally, they went through so many names for him when he was signing up for that boxing match. <laughs> and I just, like, yeah. To be fair, I have been tired during sessions. <laughs> I mean, right now, like I said, it's, like, 4 a.m. basically now. So I'm just, I'm just gonna take it all to sleep. <laughs> Um, but, like, when we went down there, and there was, like, one enemy that we fought, like, he literally just was, like, am I able to rush him from this position? And, like, Sophie's, like, yeah. So, like, he just fucking rushed him. <laughs> like, rushed right into him, like a freaking knight of swords, <laughs> just rushing in. <laughs> um, although he didn't use a sword, he rushed him with his shield and almost killed him. <laughs> He impaled him with the shield, because there's, like, spikes on it. Um, so that was actually kind of really funny. Um, so, the strength and Demeter Harvest, um, 
I thought it would probably be more of battle. And the Knight of Swords, I feel like, is definitely on that battle point, though, with the advice. Oh, Shadow. Um, but, like, the actual, like strength, um, and I feel maybe even the Demeter, is we found this oracle down there, um, and he literally was all about, it kind of makes me think, oh, Manson, are you gonna want out? I had to shut the door because I'm talking. Manson, do you want out? Okay, he's gone. <laughs> he was done laying in my floor. I wasn't giving him any attention. <laughs> Um, he's just rolling around on the floor. <laughs> um, but anyway, so we found this oracle down there, right? And, um, with strength, I know strength, one of the keywords is obviously, you know, like, stuff like patience. And man, did this guy have patience. Because he's an oracle, so he's able to see, it, honestly, it makes me think of Garnet from Steven Universe. As in, Garnet is basically kind of able to see, like, the paths. Um, although this is a little bit more precise oracle it's not like this is gonna happen. It's more so that he was like, all, like, I don't want to, I don't want to leave this place. I don't want you guys to rest me. Well, why? Because all the paths after this moment, if we go down that path, will result in my, my early death. So, like, it's more so, like, seeing the different, the different choices that could happen in various things, which kind of makes me think of Garnet from Steven Universe, because she's kind of like that. You know, and then, like, her predicting is more so with the more likely one, where the Oracle kind of was just, he looks at all of them, and then it's like, well, this and, you know. Um, but, like, he was literally being tortured for information. <laughs> so, like, he literally was waiting and abiding his time for, like, the perfect moment to be able to escape. And if that's not strength, I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's like physical and mental strength. <laughs> um, and then like Demeter Harvest, like I was thinking when I looked back on this. Um, well, first off, we did gather. We did pick him up and gather. We also took um, the guy that we that that we took down. Although we ended up like leaving him. Honestly, like Davin kind of wanted to kill him. Kind of for the lols. <laughs> I'm just, he just wanted to punch him or something. He did poke him at one point. He did poke, he did poke him. And Loki, I kind of wanted to seal his robes. But, like, I felt like that wouldn't have gone well down with the party. I mean, <laughs> I was already kind of, like, questioning things. Because <laughs> I just liked getting under everyone's skin. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um. But, yeah, we did actually pick him up and, like, bring him with us to the inn. Um. But also, like, I was thinking, um, with the idea of harvest, it kind of makes me think of, you know, like, I was, I, it makes me think of the Seven of Pentacles, and, like, kind of, like, you know, like, you, 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 you plant all the seeds, and then you'll be able to harvest them. Like, it has, it's, it's got that hard work that, you know, obviously, especially gonna get, like, the Nine of Coins, you know, um, and just, I don't know why, it kind of makes me think of that. And it also, again, makes me think of, like, him abiding his time, waiting for, like, the perfect moment to, like, want us to get him to escape. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, we, we did have some combat, though. Um, although the combat ended up happening on a train. <laughs> so, the what else we're gonna find, um, that was the Three of Coins and then Apollo, which is Clarity. And the three of coins, we were essentially, like, working and, like, talking together about, like, what we could do in this situation. Like, Davin was actually speaking up and saying, I don't know, man, I think we should, I think we should kill that guy behind us. I mean, if you guys are saying we can't take him, then, and they can track us through him, I think we should just kill him. And then, like, <sighs> our half work was like, no, because... If we kill him, we'll have to eat him. And I don't want to eat him. And I'm thinking, what? Like, so what if he's tied up? That doesn't mean we have to eat him. And it's like, no. You eat what you kill. And I'm like, I don't abide by that. <laughs> and they're like, what part? Like, not eating this guy? Or just not, or just like not eating what you kill? And I'm thinking in my head, like, neither, like... 
Like, I know Davin has not established, like, what kind of food he eats, but to be honest, I always see him as being that guy that just eats whatever. <laughs> like, he likes ale, he'll eat some meat, he'll eat some bread. He's not really doing the, doing the killing, though. I mean, he usually just eats at the end. He's very much kind of like a city-like druid. He, does, he goes about his business burning down dead forests, like, you know, that's his job as a druid. But really, he, he likes staying in the city a lot, so he doesn't... He's not like the other two. They're from the forest, you know? Also, I found out they're, like, both 15, and my character's, like, 57. Which, like, in gnome years, I've been, like, an adult for 17 years. Because <laughs> they reach adulthood at 40. So I was... That was kind of funny. I, like, realized that, and I'm like... So wait, I could be calling you guys youngsters... Oh man, this is sweet. I think next session I'm gonna start calling them youngsters because that's funny. <laughs> they're both essentially teenagers. And I'm like 57 years old, 17 years into adulthood. Like, yes, <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> um, which they were like, wait, gnomes live how long? And I'm like, yeah, I'm 57 years old and I've been an adult for 17 years. Why do you think I hated the orphanage so much? I mean, I was in there for, for, I had to be in there till I was 40, because <laughs> I'm a gnome. <laughs> and they're like, no wonder you hated it so much. And I'm like, I'm, I'm 57, you know? I don't reach adulthood till I'm 40. I mean, yeah, I've been living my freedom for 17 years. I'm going to keep going about it. <laughs> um, who was I talking about? <laughs> I don't even remember. Um, but yeah, um... Davin was definitely speaking up and giving his opinion on stuff. He was still kind of standing behind. I he when when I'm role playing him, and that's kind of also me just being used role playing. But I feel like he would kind of do it too. He's usually very neutral and kind of which he's literally chaotic neutral. <laughs> but he kind of just stays in the background and like they'll be like, yeah, let's do this, yeah, let's do this. But Davin will give his opinion because if they're gonna go do something, it'd probably be safest to go with them because. Well, if I go into this room by myself, what if someone's gonna jump me? You know, like, I'm only three foot tall. <laughs> no, but like, literally, I'm just, I'm just a druid that can, I, I was only level one, okay? <laughs> like, Davin doesn't have that much combat experience. He's got burning experience, you know, burning down those dead forests. Some new ones will grow, but if you don't really have any combat experience, he's, well, you know, besides bar fights, but, um... Yeah, I don't, I don't really see him going all out with spells or anything, or them going all out spells, and, you know, that's fist to fist, and usually he loses, um, anyway, so, yeah, um, <laughs> he, um, he has a negative one modifier to strength, his strength is only eight, <laughs> so, um, he's not very strong, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he is a gnome, what do you expect, um, but yeah, he, he was kind of, like, at least giving his opinion on things, and actually talking. So, I was right about the, about how, um, because I thought it was going to be that we were definitely going to work together for, like, a team, pretty much, for the first time. Um, and then also we were going to find out information about what's happening, and we definitely found out information about what's happening. And I think what's interesting is, uh, it's the card for Clarity. And obviously, it's, like, new information, but we literally got a freaking oracle, like, and the card was for Apollo. And, like, I mean, I mostly know, like, divination for, um, Themis, of course, um, but, like, Apollo also, uh, took over the oracles as well, if I remember correctly. I mean, I'm not, I'm not into Apollo, so. And right now, I'm reading a webcomic, and I am, like, so mad at Apollo, like, she better... Like, she better tell Hades what happened. Like, Persephone, she better tell him what happened. And then, like, they could, like, hug it out. And, like, Hades is so awkward. But, like, come on. Like, give her a hug. She's gonna need a hug. I'm not, yeah, she needs a hug. <laughs> That's really good. Um, it's, um, actually, if anyone wants to know what the name of it is, it's, um, oh, I'm using my phone over there. It's from, um, I think the app's called Webtoons. Or at least on my phone it's called that. But the actual comic's called, uh, Lore Olympics. I think oh that's weird I, I keep forgetting that there's like shadowy because my camera's here <laughs> but I think it was called lore olympics um and just it's literally like the story like a modern retelling 
of like Hades and Persephone and like oh my god like they're so cute together <laughs> like I'm just waiting for more but the last chapter I'm mad at Apollo like fuck you Apollo <laughs> <laughs> also can I just say like literally everyone thinks Hades is a douchebag in that comic because his brothers are douchebags like oh my god like his brothers are fuckboys and it's like to be honest <laughs> like especially Zeus like <laughs> anyway anyway <laughs> so yeah that was um freaking Apollo like see that's the thing with like cards when I can't always see, like, all the information, but it's definitely there. <laughs> um, and that's why I think, like, things like this is kind of interesting, especially, like, I really had no idea what was happening. And I wasn't really reading for myself, I was reading for a character, which made me, like, also not really sure what was gonna happen. Um, and then, no, at some points, I find it a little bit harder to, like, get into the role-playing. Um, luckily, Davin kind of has the same stance of me with the whole, um... Well, as long as I don't die, you know? <laughs> Davin's very much that, so none of that's really even... Like, it's roleplayed, but, like, it doesn't entirely have to be roleplayed, because, to be honest, it's so me. <laughs> um, basically, him getting under people's skin is not really me. <laughs> but, damn, does he love it. <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, the ones after that was the advice for, like, the three of coins, and then clarity was the Magician and Artemis, which is Purity, which I assumed it was very much, um, I, like, get creative, but make sure to stay true to yourself. And this one actually makes me think of literally this, like, like how I said with, we found something down there, and there ended up being a fight scene because of the consequences of us getting him out. And because we got him out, there was a train fight scene. <laughs> um... And it wasn't too much teamworky because literally the two gunslingers, or, or one's a gunslinger, Flint's a gunslinger, and then we had an NPC with us that was also like a gunslinger, um, and man, they just killed everyone. But it was very much like, I'm gonna shoot the one by over there, and again though, it was like our first like fight, like all three of us together, and man, Davin did terrible. I like, I missed, I missed my one throw, and I rolled such a low initiative. My initiative was four. <laughs> so I was going last. Yeah, I almost died. <laughs> um, <laughs> but luckily everyone died so quickly because apparently gunslingers are, are, are OP. <laughs> but you know, three of coins working together um, in our first scenario. scenario. Um, but then there actually was a magician um, Artemis purity moment. Um, and that one, I, I pretty much, like, was like, it, it's probably gonna be this. And it was, um, there was one point, and the, the issue was mostly that my initiative, I was going last. So I didn't really know if getting creative was really gonna help. But I was, a, I as Davin, was originally thinking, you know what? I've got some spells here, i got some spells here. Um, especially since... With, like, the pyroma pyro pyromaniac um, racial trait I have, it gives me, um, is it three or four? Three or four abilities that I can use once a day, besides my spells. So, yeah. So I'm, like, looking, and I'm like, hmm. I could just throw some fire at him. Or I could maybe put a flare right in his face and blind him for a minute, you know? Um, which is getting a little bit creative, you know, trying to, trying to be creative, but I ended up staying true to myself, which is, I, the flare prob, the flare probably would have gotten me killed, too, because I would have had to be right up in his face, and before it got to my turn, um, the guy ended up moving, so Davin would have had to move, he would have had an opportunity to attack, I probably would have died. So it was actually a good thing I did not go creative. <laughs> but, and I stayed true to myself. But, like, the, the initial, mm, maybe I should be a little creative with my spells, did actually come up. And it was actually better advice to, um, just stay true to my sh fire. Just, I got flames and I threw it and I missed. But, yeah. <laughs> I didn't lay, like, in a single attack that entire time. 
Okay, so for the last one, the last position of what's going to happen during the whole session, that one was the one I was most confused about, and I was really trying to think of maybe while things were happening I could think of it, and I was like dead tired. I had been up for, at the start of the session, it had almost been 24, no wait, we did, we started late, so I had basically been up for 24. Hours. So I was very tired. So I didn't even think about it. And at one point, the um, oracle was like talking and was talking, you know, like a typical fantasy oracle you would think of, like almost poetic. And I was like, wow, that's really poetic. And then I think I said something too, um, where I'm like, I could be poetic too. But then I was thinking in my head, poetic. Page of Cups. Like, it made me think of, like, the Page of Cups, and I had drawn the Page of Cups. Like, when I think of, like, Page of Cups, I think of, like, like, into poetry, and which, same with, the like, the Knight of Cups, but a little bit different. Like, but when I think of the Page of Cups, I think of, like, theater, and, like, some poetry, you know, like, and literally was the Page of Cups, and I literally called him a poet. <laughs> I was like, that's really poetic. I mean, I could be poetic, too, so... That happened. Um, Cronus with Cycles, I was reading over, like, what that card means again, because I was like, I don't know where that came up, but really, I think that kind of shows that, like, in a way, I'm still kind of reading for myself, because the, the whole Cycles kind of thing, it didn't take place during the session, but after the session, I was talking to, um, who was that, Eric? I'm very bad with names. <laughs> when we play with them twice now. Like, that's, uh, that's Eric, right? That plays the half-orc. Um, anyway, we stayed out after in Discord a little bit, and we were kind of just discussing and talking about, like, um, our characters in the future, but then also the idea of what characters would we play if our characters die? Because this isn't going to be a session where, like, Sophie's just going to let us live. Like, no, we, we might die. <laughs> Like, it wouldn't be uncommon for us to die from, like, what I've gotten when Sophie's talked about, like, the game she's hosted. Like, we could die. <laughs> so we were kind of actually talking about what characters we would play if our character died. And that really kind of makes me think of, like, just what, just what the book says for that card. Like, like, literally. Because with Oracle cards, I'm, I will sometimes, will go, like, I was, like, you know, like, Apollo, clarity, like, it's, it's gotta be, like, finding new information, but then there's sometimes that I do actually like to go in the book, because, like, I don't use oracles as much, you know, so I do like to go in the book and kind of just get a little bit of more info, um, and not just go by, like, the keyword and any initial feelings, like, I like to go a little bit more, um, and so I did with that one, and, like, it does make sense, so, like, in the end, I feel like, the cards that were drawn were really on point, um, I feel like, especially with that last card, it kind of shows that in a way you still are kind of reading for yourself. Either that, or I'm just not, like, getting as much into role-playing as what I should be. So maybe I should, like, be even more dabbing while I'm role-playing. Um, <clears throat> it also, I feel like what's interesting is... Me not getting exactly what we were happening, like, right, but the cards were showing it. It actually makes me think of the crazy thing that happened, which was, um, our half-orc and our kitsune was, um, our kitsune, uh, I cannot speak, kitsune, yeah, there we go, kitsune. <laughs> I kept wanting to say A at the end for some reason. They, um, went to where they were having, uh, a boxing match, and the oracle told us, the oracle was like, you have a 50-50 chance of beating the champion. And so they're like, you know, like, oh, that's good enough, you know, like, if anything, it'll be a fun fight, you know, it's like, what, two gold dinner, like, let's do it, let's do it. Um, yeah, Sophie designed that match to make it so... He would not win. Our, like, no, our half-orc was not going to win that match. 
Um, but when, you know, you get, uh, like, three 20s, <laughs> three, uh, 20s, and, um, and then the enemy gets a crit fail, I mean, yeah, he won. Um, <laughs> the Oracle <laughs> was right. And Sophie, Sophie even said that sometimes the Oracle just says things because you never know with dice. I mean, it's so funny. The Oracle was actually right. And the DM wasn't expecting it. It was so funny. Um, and I feel like in a way that even kind of shows that like, because again, like, it kind of makes me think um, of how like, in, like, a situation with, like, Pathfinder or something, um, I, like, I feel like this reading even could have been even more accurate in, like, a different way if Davin was, like, full-on in charge, like, we're doing this. Because, like, Davin was very much going along with things, um, but if Davin had just gone and went for things, like, Night of Swords liked it, um, then things probably would have been a lot different. Like, I, I as Devin, um, didn't really kind of want to break the oracle out. I mean, he literally said, and I said, because they were like, I don't get it. And so then I'm like, I was trying to repeat, like, what he was saying, as in, the chances of him dying early are pretty much gonna happen if we break him out. Like, you know, essentially, we should leave him here, you know, like... He knows what's gonna happen. He knows that we can break him out another time and he's okay with waiting. He's been waiting this whole time, like, he is a strong individual. And he even told us, he's like 900 years old, like, you know, like, he, 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 he knows things. <laughs> like, he, he knows, like, shouldn't we go with what he says? But apparently, like, um, waiting is like, not a good thing. Basically, um, <laughs> I think Flit's also chaotic neutral, but, you know, then we've got, we've got a goody two-shoe in the party, you know, so. <laughs> Literally was rolling to see if they lose control of their emotions when we could hear, like, the oracle getting whipped in the other room, like, okay, I'm still in control, like, another whip, okay, I'm still in control, <laughs> it's like, oh my god, like, you're such a goody two-shoe, like, we should just leave him and come for him later. If anything, I think it'd be more interesting if me, if we maybe asked him what all we could find here, you know? Um, could be some treasure, you know? We could, you know, um, take the guy we found and um, interrogate him, and if he knows nothing, we could just kill him. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's just, I feel like... Even more getting to character, it kind of makes me think that, like, more different things would happen. But essentially, at the same time, there's other people that are getting to make choices as well. And, like, I'm very much on the stance of, like, you can kind of read the future, but nothing's going to be exact anyway. Because there's always the choice that you're going to make and the choices of others. It's always more so, like, advice, you know? And I feel like this, in a way, kind of showed it. That, like, the choices of others probably really affected this. I mean, like, if Devin had his way, it probably would have been a lot more like I had imagined, you know? And I'm gonna pause this real quick so I can... Yeah. Because it only lets me record for, like, 28 minutes at a time. Um, yeah, I just, I feel like if it was just Devin in there, it probably actually would have been exactly like what I thought it was gonna be. You know, where it's, like, going through, fighting more enemies, you know, like most of the session taking place there since i was very much on the stance that if we couldn't go further we should at least stay in town you know and like rescue the oracle later i mean we were able to rescue him and we're currently in a place where i as davin can definitely learn some things like that's where i actually left off of my character i wasn't at the boxing match doing anything interesting i was um reading a book learning some engineering Specifically how to make the, um, auto males, which are, like, mechanical arms. Um, because the world, the world's a steampunk world that we're playing in, so. I, I, I like to tinker and, um, mostly fix things. I mostly fix things. But my profession is, uh, engineer. 
Yeah, I'm an engineering druid. <laughs> That's also a gnome. <laughs> and I'm chaotic neutral. <laughs> oh, damn, and I love you. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just so interesting. Um, I'm curious because I know before the match, before the session on this Friday, um, which I need to go ahead and erase Sunday's date. Um, I have a whiteboard calendar. Um, I'm definitely going to do another reading, but this time I'm going to see if it could almost be more accurate if I'm reading for Davin and also myself, because you never know, like, there could be moments like how that last card seemed to actually be more of a pull for me than for necessarily Davin, unless, like, it dealt with, like, the whole, oh my god, I almost died moment, <laughs> and I would have had to make a new character, um, but I kind of feel like it was more, like, for me just kind of being, like, oh, like, kind of, like, keep your mind open and keep thinking about, like, other possible characters that you can make, you know, um, to replace Davin or even in, like, another kind of session. But I'm kind of curious what will happen if I read for myself and Davin for, like, the same session, you know? Like, how different it's going to be. Um, and then that, I don't know when, what day I'll do that on. I still have to finish my paintings. I'm almost done with that, though. Um, yeah, sometimes this week before the match I'll film that. And then after the match I'm going to see um, how that goes. If anything, if anything, this is all, like, great practice, though. Because, like I said, I don't really read for other people. Um, usually when I do, it's kind of accurate, though. Um... But there are sometimes, usually it's with, like, gener general stuff. Like, my mom wanted me to, like, she wants me to do, like, another general reading. And I'm not very good with those. Like, something really, I'm, what am I supposed to be pinpointing at? Like, I know that's just a thing in general, though, with reading. Like, you know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, if, any, if anything, this could always be practiced, too. Because, like, unlike with practicing of just interpreting the cards with, like, a fake client, like, this is, like, a client, and I'm seeing what's happening, you know, like, I'm literally the, essentially kind of the client, I'm just not reading for myself, I'm reading for my character, so I think it's, like, an interesting, uh, way to practice, um, just because, like, it's not even, like, word of mouth, like, oh, that thing actually did happen, you know, it's, like, I'm literally experiencing that thing, just as another person, essentially, <laughs> I don't know, I just think, I just think the idea of, like, OCs is just really interesting. So that's why I'm kind of, like, doing this, because, I don't know, it's just kind of interesting, because, like, you're reading for yourself, but you're not really reading for yourself, you're reading for a character, and they're not really real, but at the same time, they're kind of real because they're you. <laughs> you know? Like, it's interesting. Um, I know once these paintings are done, I'm gonna start, um talking to my friend in Final Fantasy again. I haven't, like, spoken to him, like, since we all, like, got together, but that's because I needed to get this done. <laughs> so I didn't want to speak to him, like, because I wasn't, I, w I haven't really been playing the game because I've been needing to get this done. Um, but, like, once that's done, I'm gonna freaking play some Final Fantasy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Especially since, um, Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday, new patch, so... I'm definitely going to be playing, but I'll, um, hit them up. And then maybe when that starts up, I probably not post it because I feel like Gavin's, um, since it's definitely a weekly thing, it's just better for more experimenting-wise, but I'll probably do readings for Nivea. And Nivea actually kind of makes sense, too, because, um, she actually does divination, so in a way, I could be role-playing as Nivea doing a reading for myself, Nevia. <laughs> That's even more interesting. What if Nevia does a reading for me? <laughs> I don't know, like, what would it be? Like, role play. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just think that's all interesting. That'd be kind of interesting to see what happens, like, if I'm, like, literally role playing as Nevia, and I did a reading for me, Des, what would that be like? Would that be like me giving myself reading? Because it's me, and I'm reading for myself, but yet I'm reading as me. I don't know. Like, it is, like, 4.30 in the morning, and I'm just, like, randomly, right? because I'm like, what? 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 Like, I don't know. It's just... I just think the idea of that kind of stuff's interesting. Um, 
I haven't, like, looked to see if anyone actually even does, like, studies or, like, anything or written anything about that. Like, it's just kind of, like, me just kind of, like, philosophy. I don't know, like, <laughs> tarot philosophy-ish, you know? Not, like, philosophy, but, you know, like, kind of more that philosophy. Like, that kind of, like, mindset you do, like, when you're thinking of, like, philosophy. The whole, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> you know, like, is there a god? <laughs> you know, it's like that kind of mindset, like, what if, you know? But is it this? You know, like, hmm. And it's almost like unanswered questions, especially since it could always be different, especially, like, depending on how well you're role-playing. If you're really in character, like, who knows? I don't know. I just think that's all interesting. Um, maybe I'll try doing that, too. Who knows? Um, if anything, I don't know if I'll post about it. I just kind of decided to do Davin, especially since, like, it's me to talk about Davin because Davin's cool. <laughs> like, he's, he's a cool... I'm, I'm cool now. Hey. Uh, camera died. <laughs> um... I know I have the camera, like, currently positioned so weirdly right now, like, because I don't feel like screwing it onto the thingy make finger that stands it up, and, like, I kind of like this angle, to be honest, though, too. Um, at least for the daytime when there's light coming through the window. But anyway, I basically, I think I was literally in the middle of just saying that I, Devin, am cool. <laughs> um... But yeah, that was pretty much it. I'm just filming this little thing because it died before I could, like, obviously finish saying that Davin's cool. Um, no, but <laughs> just to do, just to, just to end the video too, so. Am I interrupting your nap? <laughs> Unless you're trying to take a nap. I'm so cute. Oh, now you're hungry though? No, he's hungry though. <laughs> so cute. Anyway, um, I'm Des from Arrow Tarot and I'm walking off, so bye.